Maybe you've read the books, you've seen the show, but have you ever made a Game of Thrones mead? Let's try it. Hey, this is Man Made Mead. I'm excited to share this mead with you. This is a Game of Thrones inspired mead. So what we're making here is basically a lemon, um, a lemon mead. And this is uh, Sansa's mead from Game of Thrones. And I will, of course, put the recipe that we're gonna be using here. So we are, um, first of all, using lemons. That's what we did. We have about eight lemons that we have juiced and I have zested a few of them. Um, we are using a gallon of water. Uh, a, about two and a half pounds of honey. In this case, we're using Florida orange blossom honey. A handful of raisins, I'll explain those in a moment, and black tea that we have steeped. So what I did um, is I took and I you know, zested and ended up juicing the lemons, which was a pretty easy process. Then I took and I made about a third of a gallon of black tea with three tea bags, uh, three black tea tea bags, and um, then, you know, here we are. We're at, we're at this next point. I uh, forgot to mention I'm using yeast too, the Lauvin QA23. But I'm really excited to make a, a um, Game of Thrones mead. I've never made one before. This seems like fun. First thing you want to do is do what I just said. Uh, juice your lemons and zest them. Make your black tea. Now we get to the really kind of easy part. I have been sanitizing everything I've used, by the way. This little red bucket here is full of uh, star sand water, which is a sanitizer used to help in brewing and to uh, get rid of any bad bacteria. So we've done that, we've sanitized everything. I'm going to first start mixing my uh, ingredients in. And I'll explain, explain this process. Maybe you've never made a mead before. Meads are really simple to make. You need to mix your ingredients together with your yeasts, um, depending on whatever kind of yeast you're using, and then let it go through primary fermentation. And then after it goes through primary fermentation, it sits and it ages. This mead, the recipe I'm uh, using, says to wait about six months after it has finished fermenting and it's aged. Um, and I, I probably won't wait that long for this one. It's important that you do uh, age in a glass container because it otherwise you might affect your flavors. So here we go Mixing in we're gonna fill up this uh, This glass carboy to a half gallon super simple I Use this is the same water. I use for my black tea Then I'm, I'm gonna save a little bit of this in a moment for my honey now we're going to take and we're gonna start mixing in our honey in a moment. This is, uh, this is not the container this came in originally, but I'm still using it, so it's good. And I'm gonna go ahead and pour my honey straight in. My honey's all mine. We didn't get all the honey out of this container. I'm gonna pour some of my water I've left over and shake this container. And then um, my other one, we can actually do the same thing and shake it, but I'm gonna use a stirring rod because it's a little easier than trying to shake it a bunch. Okay, here we have our mixed um, mead so far. This has the lemon juice, this has the black tea, the must, which is the honey water mixture. I put in the, the lemon uh, zest and the raisins. Now, this is what it looks like. And I just uh, sprinkled the yeast too, so you can kind of see the yeast floating around in there. Um, let me answer a couple questions that you might have. Can you use a different yeast than the Lavin QA23? Absolutely. The reason I'm using this Lavin QA23, it is a great yeast for basically all meads. Um, it gets up to about 14%. One thing I'm gonna do before I end up putting this away is I'm gonna take a gravity reading. A gravity reading is where you take and you put a hydrometer into this liquid and it measures the gravity, which then will tell you how alcoholic is your mead going to be. So I'm gonna do that real fast. This is a graduated cylinder filled with our mead. This is a hydrometer, sticking it right in. It's pretty close to the top right now. What you will find is that your hydrometer will float to a certain point. And I will show you exactly what our, our um, gravity is. You might be able to see, I don't know if you can or not, this is floating at 1.090, which means that that is our current or starting gravity. 
Why is it important to take a gravity reading? It's important because you want to know how alcoholic your meat is going to be. We know that based off of our gravity of 1.090 that um, I will have a potential ABV if the yeast completely ferment out of, I believe, if I'm not mistaken, um, about 12%. So, uh, and there's a mathematical formula. If you want to reference that, it's pretty simple. But now I'm gonna mix this stuff back in, pour it back in, and then I will put on an airlock and a bung, or boonge, or however you say it, with water filling it. And then we will watch and see this thing ferment. It should take off here in about 12 hours, and it will probably take around six to 12 days, depending on how fast the fermentation is to finish fermenting. We're back after the primary fermentation took 403 hours for this thing to ferment. You just saw the time lapse of it all. It was quite the event, but this thing is done and um, I mean, it's got some a little bit of bubbling. We're going to find out if it's completely done in a moment by checking the gravity. But for this next step, you're going to need an auto siphon and some tubing, which is what I have here. We are going to be moving this mead into this new container so that we can get it off of the raisins and um, those various things. So let me go ahead and just remove it off of this and then we'll take a gravity reading. Okay, so let's, let me show you what you're avoiding. This is all the stuff at the bottom after the fermentation that you don't want in the mead ultimately. It's called sediment. Um, a little pro tip for you, if you're moving from your mead over, put it from the one you're moving out of on a higher surface, put it lower, the other one on a lower surface so that uh, gravity helps. <clears throat> Let's take a gravity reading of this. Quick little note, uh, I say the wrong numbers here because I read the wrong numbers on the carboy. It is actually 1.090 um, for the starting gravity, not 1.070. Okay, you can see here maybe that the gravity is currently setting up after fermentation 1.000. It started off at uh, 1.070, which means that if you either look at your hydrometer um, or if you look at uh, a online source, you will find that the gravity or the ABV of this thing going from 1.070 down to 1.000 will leave us with about a 9% mead. So uh, I'm very, very content with that. The next step is super simple. We are gonna be taking and uh, letting this age for a little bit longer, but not until we have a taste test. All right, so I know you all have been waiting for this. What does it taste like? It's been fermenting for, if my math is right, something like 15 to 18 days. I can't remember exactly. I'll put it on here, how long, but smelling it, very, very lemony. I think that's coming from the zest, also, also the juice. You get some honey smell. It smells incredible. It does smell like a lemonade, quite, or you know, like a hard lemonade. All right, and tasting it. Yeah, this thing, it, it um, very, very lemony. Uh, I think, I think that's a lot because obviously how much, how much lemon we put in. Ultimately, Ultimately, I'll probably need to add some more honey in order to sweeten it some so that it's not so tart. It's very tart right now. However, it's not, there's not bite from alcohol. So this thing's really, really good. Um, we'll talk about that in the future, um, what, what will happen with this. But I am for now going to take and put my airlock back on to my container we have here and um, you see how I'm kind of not clear it is. We don't really, I mean, clarity is not the end of the world for this mead, but it does look nicer if you can get it to be clear. We're going to let it sit for probably a good month. And uh, we're going to decide after that if we want to go ahead and bottle it. I will forewarn you that if your mead has this much air 
space on top, you do not want to store it um, long term with a ton of headspace. Like I have a few up here that are really, that have some headspace on that I need to go ahead and bottle because oxygen and alcohol don't mix. I'll be back in a little bit with some more updates, some more tastings, and we'll talk about the future of this mead. It's been about two weeks since I did anything with this mead. Now what I'm gonna do is actually take and stabilize the mead. There's a couple of ways you can do this. One of the ways is by using potassium sorbate and potassium metabisulfite, which are two stabilizers. Um, and you can add those in and that kills off the yeast, stops them from fermenting. I don't wanna do that because sometimes there can be off flavors that come from that. I, instead, I am going to pasteurize this mead, which means I'm going to take and put it in my oven and let it reach 150 degrees, 150 degrees Fahrenheit for um, about 20 minutes, and that will do the same process, kill off the yeast. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that real fast. Let me heat this thing up, and there's a couple other ways you can pasteurize, but this is the method I'm choosing. And after that, uh, we will be good to actually take and add some honey in, because it will be, the yeast will basically be dead at that point. So let's heat it up. We have finished pasteurizing this mead, which means we got it up to the 150 degrees for about 20 minutes. It took about an hour and a half in the uh, oven because of how baking something works. While this is warm, it is sitting at about 100, 120 degrees. We don't wanna include any cold things because uh, that'll shatter the glass. We can include room temp honey, which is going to um, actually be better for dissolving right now. So let's go ahead and back sweeten this thing. Originally, I said I was gonna let this age for you know, a month or two. Uh, I believe this mead will age just fine in a bottle. So you can either choose to bottle age something or to bulk age something, which means to you know, do exactly what they say. Leave it to age like this or leave it to age in a bottle. Ultimately, this will bottle age. So here is our introduction of our honey. We're using the exact same honey that we started with which is the Florida Orange Blossom. This is a different container. This is something else. This is about two pounds of honey. So let's go ahead and add in exactly, let's say, or how about this? We'll just go ahead and, and pour some in and we're gonna do this to taste, not necessarily um, scientifically currently. So let me go ahead and add all the honey I need to make this taste the way I want it. I have added a total of about a quarter of a pound of honey to this. And I've got it to a point where I feel pretty comfortable. So the big thing with this mead, the defining factor is the lemon side. I don't wanna to move too far away from the tart lemon because I believe that again, is the defining factor, the characteristic of this mead that's probably most interesting. So uh, I'll go ahead and tell you kind of what things I'm tasting. First of all, it is definitely warmer. It's like 120 degrees, so it's kind of like a mold mead which could affect a little bit of the flavor currently. It might be different when it becomes room temp, but uh, I believe that I'm getting, en getting enough sweetness to tart ratio. And uh, the lemon zest, I really, I think I might have honestly used a little too much lemon zest because that lemon, one, the, the lemon's tart itself, but the lemon zest has its own like flavor. And I believe that that bright lemon side is popping because of that. So if I were making this again, I would use less lemon zest. There is a good honey retention, which I like a lot. Um, and overall, this mead is, is pretty good. I, I do think that with age, it'll be even better because age helps meld all of your flavors. And this is a very flavorful mead between our uh, lemon side that we have, the tea, which provides tannins, but it also provides some flavor to it as well. And then of course the honey, all of that will meld together better over time. So I'm very content with this. That quarter pound of honey is just enough. If I have stabilized this properly with my pasteurization, there should be no re-fermentation. So I'm gonna put my airlock back on this, stick it back up on my shelf, and we are going to see if there's any re-fermentation. If not, in about probably a week, I'm gonna go ahead and bottle it, and then we will um, let that bottle age. So I'll be back in a moment with the bottling. It's time to bottle, and I don't think I included this before, I might have. The final gravity for this is 1.010 after we put the quarter pound of honey in. 
Now we are going to bottle. We need, of course, our bottling things. This is my star stain water that I'm soaking stuff in to make sure that I'm sanitized. You need a auto siphon. You need tubing and you need a bottling wand to do this or whatever the way you do this. I'm gonna go ahead and bottle all of these. I'll tell you how many bottles I get at the end of it. And yeah, here we go. We have finished bottling. I have two wine bottles. I have one 387, I think, milliliter bottle and three beer bottles. I only got about a half of this beer bottle filled and I'll just go ahead and drink it because I can. This project took 45 days in total from the moment we started the fermentation to now. Can you age this for longer? Absolutely. And in, in fact, if I had more space in my brew room, it looks like I have a lot of space right now, but uh, I'm actually moving a bunch of stuff around. If I had more space, I would gladly let this ferment or let this age for longer. If you want to see a taste test of this six months or so from now, um, Make sure you hit like and subscribe because I'll be doing one of those telling you how it's updating and getting better over time. My labels for this kind of look like this and um, I, I really enjoy doing this one. I am definitely going to be doing more of these in the future, more Game of Thrones inspired meads. So if you enjoyed this one, make sure of course hit like and subscribe. Thank you guys for uh, watching. Hope you maybe have been inspired to try this. Try this on your own if you'd like. The recipe is there of course. And I would love to know what you think down below in the comments. Um, what, you know, maybe what's another mead recipe you want me to make? I would love to hear about that. Make sure you hit the, uh, go down to the description and find all of the links to support the channel, including a Patreon where I post exclusive content, early access to content, various other things. Um, it's a lot of fun. So I'll be back again in the future with more videos. I'll see you next time. And of course, with that, cheers.